So you have this beautiful project you have rendered using Enscape and you want to share it with folks, but you can't be there in person. So you want to create an, a virtual reality presentation. Well, fortunately, you can do that with almost just a click of a button. Here's how you do it. First of all, you'll want to open up your Revit file um, or SketchUp file, if you're using SketchUp, to the view that you want the file to open up in. And this is important if you're sending this to a client. You want kind of your favorite view to be the one that, that they're presented with first. You'll also want to star the views that are uh, the ones you want to kind of show up in the quick menu. Now for us, I'd like you to have four views. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the bedroom, the front yard, uh, the kitchen, and the living room. Uh, by the way, sections uh, just aren't going to work very well uh, when you get to uh, the web standalone. Not quite sure why. They work fine in Enscape, but not in the standalone. So star those views. Uh, and again, this works the same in SketchUp and Revit. And the other thing that you could do if you wanted to do, and if you want an instant A and you can figure out how to do this, um, you can put in a sound object. And what these are, these are basically uh, files, sound files, that when you get close to them, they'll make noise. And I'll just click this uh, sound object and you'll see that um, a select menu comes up. And when you have clicked on the face that you want to put the object on. You could also just put it on the floor, but um, uh, I can choose here. There are two different uh, MP3 files that kind of come with it. There's a restaurant sound, a sound and a clap sound. Uh, you can pick either one of those, um, or you can make your own file, which is you talking about the object that you're looking at. How cool would that be if your client could zoom in on, say, their expensive fireplace and then what would they hear when they get near it but you describing the fireplace. So totally cool, very fun. Anyway, uh, I already have one in my project. I'll show you. It comes in and it looks uh, just like a speaker. You can click on that object and the fun thing about this is in the properties menu you can control how close you need to be to hear the full volume and how uh, far away you need to be before it changes, uh, let's see, I think this is in metric, so I'll change it to about a half meter away before it starts to sound loud. And you might say, well, what, you know, what does this even do? Well, if you go back to the sound menu, and uh, I'm going to turn on sound here. If you, if you'll, yours is probably uh, not highlighted because uh, usually it's off by default. And now, as I zoom in in the Enscape window, you should hear, whoops, the sound uh, object as I get close to it. And then of course as you zoom back the sound goes away. How cool is that? Now uh, if you want as a cue for your client uh, to have these sound objects in there uh, you can actually just leave the icon in. If you don't want it in there go to the general settings here on, uh, on Enscape and uh, if you go down to preferences, you'll see there's an, uh, a checkbox next to sa show sound sources. You can just turn that off. The sound will still work uh, either way. So once you've done that, and once you have a model that you know renders, really it's just a matter of exporting the image. And there are two options. We're going to do both of them. The EXE standalone is a file which can be opened on a Windows computer and it is very reliable. It has all the full controls, including exposure and lighting. Um, the web standalone, we will also export that, and um, because the EXE standalone only works on PCs, the web standalone is great if you're sending this file to somebody who doesn't have a PC, doesn't have all the controls um, or the saved views, but uh, it still is quite easy to uh, export and navigate. So I'm going to click the EXE standalone first. Uh, obviously, you need to find somewhere to save it. So, you know, put it on your desktop or somewhere recognizable like that and just hit save. And you'll see on your screen there's a, a, a kind of countdown. If it's successful, which it, it is pretty reliable, um, it will tell you how big it is. These file sizes are 
uh, pretty big, so they may work just fine uh, posting them to Canvas if they don't use something like WeTransfer.com. So here's the export right in the middle of my desktop. And you just double click on that to open it. And lo and behold, here is what you see, and it looks suspiciously like the Enscape window that we saw before um, in when with our rendered project. This works pretty much the same way as the main version of Enscape, uh, which is to say you can click and drag with your left button to uh, change what you're looking at. You can scroll in and out, but you can also use the arrow keys. Of course, you, you can't see me using the arrow keys. If you don't remember what all the keys are, tap the letter H and up pops a menu down at the bottom that gives you a reminder. Uh, so for example, you can use um, E or Q to move up and down. Um, you can also tap M for a mini map. Mini maps are really handy um, because it's kind of like a view of your project and you can kind of click on different parts of your project and uh, zoom to that spot spot so if you are working with a client and you are kind of zoom chatting them like we are going to be doing you can navigate through the space this way now there are a number of settings which you uh, can change here uh, i'm just going to pin this so that it doesn't go away so i can show you uh, and these settings are the same as uh, in the main version of Enscape. You can crank up the outlines if you like them or make them go away. Generally, the exposure is just fine left at auto. Um, however, you may have some reason to want to change that. And the same with the field of view. You might want a wider field of view or not. Um, the other thing is that for us, uh, probably medium render quality is just fine. But if you have a nice computer, a desktop, say, that is a gaming desktop, you can crank this uh, number up and you will get a much higher uh, resolution. But as you can see, it does take some time for the system to complete rendering your screen. So uh, I would say, in general, leaving that at uh, it's kind of automatic setting is just fine. Um, draft quality will be very yucky, so uh, I would I would stay away from that. It, it kind of kills the electric lighting. Uh, there are some other settings if you are presenting yourself um, to a client, uh, including how fast your mouse moves and how smoothly it moves. Uh, again, these are all things which occur in the main Enscape window. Uh, these are all settings which are familiar. Um, the other thing is that if you are lucky enough to have some kind of like virtual reality device, uh, for example, a, a TV um, or a uh, Oculus Rift, that kind of thing, you can click on that button and it will allow you to view the project using those devices. And last year, that's exactly what we did. Students put on the goggles and we have some funny videos of them bumping into furniture in the classroom uh, as they navigate their space. It's a very powerful tool and it is becoming much more common. So anyway, finally, uh, the performance level, uh, I would leave that at automatic resolution. Uh, as mentioned, um, and then grass rendering that uh, if you look out the window, you can define a material as looking like grass. Um, in fact, you can actually make things carpet look shaggy by, uh, by making it uh, grass like. Anyway, those are the basic settings here. Um, other things like, for example, controlling the time of day, if you just hold down shift and click and drag your right mouse button, I'm just going to drag it to the right and hopefully not knock my coffee off the table. And you can see it becomes nighttime. And uh, now the electric lighting takes over. Okay, and that can be a very effective way of uh, kind of showing off uh, different aspects of your design. Obviously, the space looks quite different at night than during the daytime. Again, you just hold down shift and click and drag your right mouse button. Now, the other parts of this project are uh, you're going to be presenting your project to us. You have four different views that you are going to talk about. And um, what I would like you to do is uh, go into each room. And I just want you to show me that you know how to navigate uh, this space. This is especially important for those of you who couldn't get Enscape running on your computers. This is your big chance to find out how it works. And again, you can just use the uh, keys that are indicated here down uh, on my uh, 
little menu bar. Um, I'm using the arrow keys, but you can also use W, A, S, and D. Those of you who play a lot of video games, this is going to be very familiar. Um, clicking and dragging. Then if you want to go to a different view, say the bedroom upstairs, you just click on that view, front yard, you can click on that view. In each view, what I'd like you to do is look around, describe your project. Um, if you got a project off the internet, uh, you'll have to make it up and say, well, this is, you know, this is where my client cooks his dinner or her dinner. And, you know, uh, obviously, uh, if it's your own project, you'll know more about it. Uh, other things that you can control here. Um, first of all, there is there are two modes of navigating space in uh, Enscape. One is fly mode and one is walk mode. In walk mode, um, if you try to walk through a wall or a door, I, I've gotten stuck on the table here. I can't move. You, you can't see it, but I'm tapping my arrow key. Um, if you go to fly mode, I can fly through walls. I can fly out of windows, um, and it's a, it's a lot safer for everybody involved. Okay. Uh, the other thing that you can change is the mode of perspective. So for example, let's say I wanted to show an overview of this project. If I come in here, I can change this to axonometric mode. And um, it's easy enough to uh, orbit this model. You can see down here in the uh, toolbar, it tells you the different tools. Um, and uh, I, can, I can navigate the model that way. There are also um, standard views, kind of, uh, this looks a little sketch -y here, not sketchy, but sketch -y, where if you type in uh, 8 or 4, it will give you the elevations. Looks a little, a little washed out to me, actually, if you ask me. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll adjust the brightness down a little bit. Ah, that's better, a little less washed out. Um, again, these are all standard views which are super handy to take a look at. Um, for you guys, I'd like you to just uh, to walk us through your four different spaces in your projects, and I'd like you to, in each space, just look around in the, in the space and point out any major elements, if possible, zooming forward so that we can get a close-up look. Now, if you are presenting and you only have a Mac, and I don't know how you're working in Revit, you're just uh, a Mac person, um, you can export a web standalone. And the big advantage of the web standalone is it, it operates anywhere, and it's much easier to send. It's a small file size. And those of you who don't have great internet connection, this is terrific. So again, uh, once you have launched Enscape, Enscape has to be up and running for these exports to work. Just choose Web Standalone. And what you'll see, again, a uh, loading menu. And it should force your uh, browser to open up. And it can take a little bit of time to load. Uh, what, what is happening is basically your project is being sent to Enscape Central Control, which is in Germany somewhere. Anyway, it doesn't always look great initially. You uh, sometimes need to kind of look around the space for it to uh, detect the render settings properly. I'm not quite sure why there's there's a little bit of a lag. Um, maybe maybe because the uh, your browser is translating it to German or something like that. Anyway, what you'll find is that this is very similar to the EXE file and also the Enscape interface. You can still tap H to bring up your uh, menu here. Um, you can tap M to bring up your favorite thing, the mini map, my favorite thing. And there are settings, just as before, which you can pin to this location. Uh, in fact, we can change this to white mode or polystyrol mo mode, although it doesn't have the lighting uh, illuminance calculation mode, which is, which is a bummer. Uh, but most of the other, uh, some of the other settings are, are in here, including field of view and exposure brightness, which you can modify. Just note that when you change these, if you send this link to a client, they will not see the same changes that you made. They will have to navigate themselves. That's why the EXE standalone is definitely preferable. The other thing is that while it does have these same modes here for orthographic two-point and regular perspective, 
uh, it also has fly mode and walk mode. It does not have the saved views like you had before, so it's a little more cumbersome. You can, of course, just navigate using the keyboard controls like we did before, but uh, unfortunately you don't have that ability to kind of jump to different spaces, so it's, it's not nearly as good for presentation mode. Uh, but you can still change the time of day um, and other uh, elements of the graphic display. So for us, just copy and paste this URL up here. You can paste that into a conversation I set up for this final assignment. And that way, all of us can click on the link and open up your file. And I'm really interested to hear what you all have to say about this type of presentation, mainly because it's becoming so much more common these days. People are using virtual reality for a number of reasons, and, and not just because we're all stuck at home, but also because it's just really convenient. It's so much easier for me to send this file to a client and they can navigate the model themselves with a little bit of coaching. Frankly, in my own experience, I have found that there are so many more people out there who play video games, for example, that they are very comfortable navigating a virtual 3D space. So I would be interested to hear what you all have to say as a designer's eye, if this is adequate for you for presentation and uh, how you might incorporate it into your own sort of professional practice. Either way, when this is all said and done, you've created your EXE and your uh, web standalone, you're going to call up your EXE in class and you're going to go through the four different spaces that you have set up. And I'd like you to talk about each space. And then that's it. So good luck exporting and I'm looking forward to seeing your projects. So those of you who don't have Enscape up and running are thinking, well, this didn't really help me all that much, um, but it, it will help you. And the main thing is if you, if you did install Enscape and it just doesn't run, it, it's still there. It should be on your toolbar. Um, you can go and star the four views that I'd like you to uh, indicate, I'd like you to, to present. Uh, you can also put sound objects in there. You don't, you don't need to have Enscape up and running. And uh, if you do that and you send me your file, and you will have to send me both the Revit file and if you have a folder with materials in it, that would be awfully handy. Um, and then I can, I can just do the save as uh, on my own computer and I'll send it back to you. Now, I, I know you probably have a Windows machine because you wouldn't be running Revit otherwise. And what I have found is uh, that the EXE file is very reliable on Windows machines. And if you are so far that you don't have Enscape even installed on your computer, that's okay too. It's you, As you can see, this isn't really very hard to do. I'm not going to put in a sound object for you, but uh, you can just tell me which four views you want. Send me your Revit file. I'll star the views and uh, do the save as to export the two different types of files. Uh, and then what I would like you to do, I will try to get them back to you as quickly as possible so that you can practice navigating this virtual reality space. Also, if any of you have uh, whatever, gamers, gaming systems on at home or 3D devices, I would strongly encourage you to give it a try. And if you do, and you put on the virtual reality goggles and go navigate your space, if, if you have, uh, uh, like in my house, my son is the one with the gaming computer. Um, if you try on that uh, device, uh, that is a really powerful experience, very interesting to do. Uh, anyway, and that is uh, the way that you can finish up this project.